Hi, my name is Angela Wolf. I'm a PharmD candidate from California, North State University. And today I'll be talking about Teotropium, which also goes by the brand name Spiriva. It is a long acting muscarinic antagonist, and it comes in these two forms. Um, it comes in Spiriva Respimat, which is a fine mist inhaler, and it comes in the strength of 2.5 microgram solution. It also comes in this dry powder inhaler form. It's the 18 microgram inhalation powder, and it comes in capsule form that you use with this handy inhaler device, which I'll talk about a little bit later. So I'll be covering some patient counseling points, like what the drug is used for, what you should tell the doctor before taking this medication, and some things you need to know while taking the medication. Also, I'll go over side effects, storage, how to take the medication, and what to do if you miss a dose. So the inhaled form of teotropium is used to treat COPD, which is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, and also symptoms of asthma. Some things you should tell your doctor before taking this medication is if you are on any other drugs in the class of anticholinergic drugs, so that something like ipratropium or oxybutynin. Also, if you're allergic to any part of this drug or the drug itself, you should let your doctor know. Some things to know while taking this medication is if your breathing problems get any worse when using this medication, or if your rescue inhaler doesn't work as well when you start this medication. You wanna make sure that um, when you do spray the contents of this medication that you do not get it in contact with your eyes. Um, it can cause dilated pupils and it can also cause blurred eyesight. Also, if you're 65 years or older, you wanna make sure to use this medication with care. Also, let your doctor know if you're pregnant, if you plan on getting pregnant, or if you're breastfeeding. Also, it may take several weeks to see the full effects of the medication when you first start. So some side effects that you should look out for and let your doctor know about right away are any signs of an allergic reaction, any changes in eyesight, if you have any eye pain, irritation, or redness, if you start to see bright colors around lights, if you have any trouble passing urine, or if you experience chest pain or pressure. Some other side effects are dry mouth, upset stomach, nose or throat irritation, runny or stuffy nose, a cough, stomach pain, or dizziness. So talking about how this drug is best taken, I'll start with the dry powder inhaler form, which come in that capsule form you use with the um, handy inhaler device. So you wanna make sure that you know that these capsules are for inhalation only. Do not swallow the capsule. And when using or when taking this medication, you wanna make sure to use it with the device that comes with the drug, not any other devices. For the aerosol form, you wanna make sure to prime the medication before you first use it. If it's been more than three days since the last time you used it, you wanna make sure to prime it once, point it away from you. If it's been more than 21 days since the last time you've used the medication, you wanna make sure to prime the inhaler just as if it was your first time using it. After you've used all of the medication, the inhaler will actually lock so when that happens, you wanna make sure to go ahead and discard the medication. 
Now, in terms of storage, for the capsules, you want to make sure to store it in its original container. And when you do open the capsule packaging, you want to make sure to use that capsule immediately after opening. For the aerosol form, you want to dispose of the inhaler three months after your first use or when the inhaler locks, like I spoke about earlier. Now, if you miss a dose, you want to take that dose as soon as you remember. But if it is the next day, you can go ahead and skip that missed dose and go back to your normal dosing schedule. Don't take more than one dose of this medication in the same day. So I'm going to talk about the indication and dosing for teotropium. So the indications for teotropium are moderate to severe asthma maintenance. And this is the fine mist inhaler form only, and also COPD maintenance, which we use the um, Respimat and handy inhaler form. So for asthma maintenance therapy, um, this is in patients um, six years or older. We use the Respimat soft mist inhaler. Um, the strength of 1.25 micrograms per actuation. And the dosing is two inhalations by mouth once daily. For COPD maintenance, um, the dry powder inhaler form, um, the dose is 18 micrograms per capsule. And you're going to go ahead and inhale one capsule once daily. And then when using this dry powder inhaler, to make sure that you receive all of the medication that's in that capsule, you want to inhale each capsule twice. So after the first inhale of the dry powder inhaler, you can go ahead and wait a few seconds and go ahead and inhale again. Do not insert a new capsule. Inhale the same capsule twice. And for the Respimat soft in this inhaler, at a strength of 2.5 micrograms per actuation. For COPD, the dosing is two inhalations by mouth once daily. Now the mechanism of action for teotropium is that it competitively and reversibly inhibits the action of acetylcholine at the type 3 muscarinic receptors in the bronchial smooth muscle. And this is what causes bronchodilation. Some drug-drug interactions with teotropium include anticholinergic agents. Um, these can enhance the anticholinergic effects of teotropium, so you want to avoid any of these combinations with teotropium. Also, in terms of monitoring, um, we can monitor the FEV1, which is the forced expiratory volume in one second. Also, any anticholinergic adverse reactions, um, we mostly see these in patients with a creatinine clearance of 50 mils per minute or less. Also, we want to monitor for any signs and symptoms of narrow angle glaucoma and urinary retention. So now talking about the administration of teotropium, I'm going to start off by talking about Spiriva Respimat, which is a soft mist inhaler. So before your first use, you want to make sure to insert the cartridge into the inhaler and then also prime the medication. And you're gonna face the medication away from you or towards the ground. And you're going to spray until you see the fine mist. And then you're gonna repeat this three more times until you complete the priming. So like I talked about earlier, if you don't use it for more than three days, you wanna go ahead and 
um, spray that fine mist once before you continue to use it. If you haven't used it in more than 21 days, you want to complete that priming process again for a total of four actuations before you continue using it again. Now for Spiriva Hand Inhaler, which is a dry powder form of teotropium, you want to make sure that you do not swallow the capsule and that you don't remove the capsule from the blister pack until you're ready to use it. So when you are ready to use it, you can remove the capsule from the blister pack and you're going to place that capsule in the center of the chamber of the handy inhaler device. You want to close the mouthpiece firmly until you hear a click and then you're going to leave that dust cap open. Um, the capsule is pierced by pressing and releasing the green button on the side of the hand inhaler device. You want to make sure that before you do inhale, you exhale fully and create a tight seal with your lips around the mouthpiece. Make sure not to exhale into the inhaler. Exhale before you close your lips and form that seal around the mouthpiece. You want to tilt your head slightly back, almost like you're holding a hamburger, and inhale. And when you inhale, make sure that it is a quick steady and deep inhale. And when you do this quick, steady, deep inhale, you should hear a capsule vibration, almost like a little rattle that you can hear in the device. And that means that you are inhaling correctly. So you want to make sure to hold your breath for a few seconds once you have that medication in you. And then you're going to repeat another inhalation with the same teotropium capsule. Do not pierce the capsule for a second time with that green um, piercing button on the side, do not do that. You can just go ahead and wait a few seconds and do a second inhale of that same capsule. And once you've done that second inhale, you can go ahead and throw away that empty capsule. All you have to do is tip it into a trash can and um, don't leave it in the inhaler. And um, if you do happen to have any capsules that are exposed to air out of the blister pack for um, an extended period of time, you will need to go ahead and discard of those. So you'll have to throw those away and start with a fresh capsule if you do um, have a new dose. So now talking about side effects, warnings, and precautions of teotropium, some side effects can include gastrointestinal side effects and respiratory side effects. Um, and one that's seen more often than not is upper respiratory tract infections. Um, some warnings include bronchospasm, and this can occur with any use of inhaled agents. Also, a warning on CNS effects, it can cause dizziness and blurred vision. Also hypersensitivity reactions. So if you have a patient that has a history of hypersensitivity um, to something like atropine, um, that's something that you do want to look out for. Also some precaution um, for patients who have um, a severe milk allergy, um, the dry powder inhaler form of teotropium does um, have or does contain lactose. So you want to make sure um, to check those patient allergies and make sure that the patient doesn't have any allergies to um, lactose. So here are my references, and this concludes my presentation on teotropium.